In the winter of 1993, spiritual leaders of seven indigenous nations of North America came to the United Nations to deliver their traditional prophecies relating to the earth. Algonquin, Mi'kmaq, Wichol, Maya, Lakota, Iroquois, Hopi. They traveled from the four directions to bring their urgent messages to an audience of United Nations dignitaries and honored guests. What follows is a full record of the day's events. We've been digging, we We've been digging, no commissar. We've been digging, you know, when dog and dog. Ah,
Welcome. So Tineke. Here's a child's drum to the children of the future, and we place it here in the house of hope for all children of the earth. So Tineke Kamasi Suri Kuni Wat a Junit in Dende. A yune naki neneti we bona dit ewe nako naki go dinat seda e yu a junit in dende. My relatives, it is with great deep gratitude and honor we, the people of the land, have come here to hear the indigenous prophecies of North America in caring for the earth. Welcome to this conference called Cry of the Earth, First Nations Legacy. It is most appropriate that it is in this year, the UN Year of Indigenous Peoples, that the First Nations of this country have come to share with the rest of the world their philosophies in caring for the earth. This is in her time of distress, and the message is for all of the children of the earth. And for the first time, we share in this house of hope and justice for all of mankind. We are grateful for the dedicated people who have made it possible for us all to be here. And in that regard, I would like to acknowledge Mrs. Boutros boutros Gali, who is with us here today. And if you will share with me the gratitude Masicho, Masicho. And now, if you'll help me welcome His Excellency Samuel R. Insanali, the President of the 48th United Nations General Assembly, I welcome him to come and share his thoughts with us. Madam Boutros Ghali, distinguished participants, brothers and sisters, it is my great pleasure this morning to welcome the spiritual leaders of seven of the indigenous nations of North America to this house of all the world's peoples. We are eager to undertake a dialogue with you and to continue a conversation some of us began last year at the first Global Environmental Conference in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, when indigenous voices offered a clear call for greater awareness of the threats to the well-being of the planet Earth. We gather today, as you know, in troubled circumstances. Though it is a time of so-called peace, 80,000 UN soldiers are deployed in several areas of the world, from former Yugoslavia to Somalia, putting their lives at risk to stem the wildfire outbreak of national and regional conflict. Around the globe, national economies are bracing themselves against the onset of unemployment and recession. And though the air outside seems fresh and the sunlight exhilarating, we know how fragile the health of the earth really is. The alarm being sounded by many of our scientists about the future of the environment echo your own concerns for the future of the earth and the need to live in harmony with all of nature. I believe today's historic gathering is part of a mounting recognition that our elder brothers and sisters of the indigenous First Nations are the custodians of a wealth of knowledge 
that is vital to our survival and the survival of the extraordinary richness of all creation. In fact, our presence here is an act of recognition of a shared heritage. We are all inheritors of the legacies of the world's first nations. Through millennia of diaspora and urbanization, we have lost contact with the abiding value of our place in nature and the knowledge of the implicit sacredness of nature. For many, prophecy has been used in its most pedestrian sense of the word. That is predicting the future, earthquakes, floods, plagues, and wars. But in the way that it will be used today, prophecy has a much more potent and transforming meaning. Prophecy is that form of vision that inspires and shapes true moral and spiritual leadership. In this century, we have known prophecy from the inspiring lives of such leaders as Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Schweitzer, Dag Hammarskjöld, Martin Luther King, uh, to name just a few. Every true leader must possess such vision, as well as the courage to follow it despite whatever hardships might be encountered. Today, we meet as leaders who aspire to such vision. In this United Nations Year of the World's Indigenous Peoples, we come together in council with a clear goal in mind and heart. As representatives of many nations together, we must help to establish a universal pact between humanity and the planet. As keepers of the traditions of some of the First Nations, you have an important contribution to make by sharing your wisdom with the rest of the world. And far from being an unprecedented event here at the United Nations, this forum, I venture to suggest, is but a beginning of an ongoing dialogue in the spirit of the new partnership which has been forged between indigenous peoples and the United Nations and was prescribed as the goal of the International Year of the world's indigenous peoples. Let us therefore strive today to achieve this very necessary reconciliation and rapprochement. And now, on behalf of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Boutros Boutros Ghali, I would like to welcome um, Ambassador Joseph Reed, the Under Secretary General for Public Affairs. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Madame Boutros Ghali, sponsors of this important conference, Your Excellencies, Delegates, Friends. On behalf of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali, I am pleased to welcome to the United Nations all of you attending this conference on the theme, Cry of the Earth, the Legacy of the First Nations. The Secretary General has asked me to convey his best wishes for success for this important conference, which focuses on one of the main concerns of today's world, multicultural and environmental issues. The spiritual elders of the four directions have come to New York and this House of Peace with a message. It is a message of warning, which all of us, regardless of our nationality or particular faith, must share. In 1992, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the world community raised a cry of distress. The cry of distress. The cry of pain at the state of the planet. And this message 
has been heeded. No longer can we take the resources of nature as ours to master. No longer can we behave as the conquerors of nature. The Secretary General has emphasized that his part is to emphasize the path to sustainable development is to respond to the legitimate aspiration of peoples for better living standards while ensuring that future generations retain the qualities of life in harmony with our habitat. The responsibility of this generation is tremendous. It is in our power to choke the living organism of nature, but it is also in our power to preserve it, to nurture it, to replace plunder with harmony and waste with conservation. The concerns of sustainable development come late, but not too late. We have known all along with the poet William Blake, for everything that lives is holy. Life delights in life. Today, the spiritual elders come to this House of Peace at this historic conference to remind us of this truth. It is the Secretary General's sincere hope that we come to share their concerns and their delight in life. On behalf of the Secretary General, Dr. Boutros Boutros Ghali, we extend success, expression of success for the conference, and a warm welcome to the United, to the United Nations, your United Nations. Thank you.